Chester District Attorney, starring David Bryan. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> my duty as district attorney, not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crime perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The district attorney always looks for the mistake in a murder case. If the criminal is experienced, the mistake is usually small and caused by too hurried planning. Or as in the case of Joey Lucas, the urge to get even. Joey's burning desire to square up with the former cop who double-crossed him was his wrong move. On Friday noon, Joey is waiting in his big convertible, parked outside a costume outfitter's store. Get in, Rita. Here's that extra key to Corbell's car, Joey. Well, it's two uniforms. I couldn't get them this noon. The boss was right there. Look, baby, this job is tonight. See, we've been planning it for months. Studying the whole setup all the way from truck schedules to alarm systems to police protection. I know, Duke honey, Lansky's but... flying here from St. Louis this afternoon. Everything's set nice, and now you have to slip up. Joey, I'll have those uniforms after work, honest. You better. And after this job, I'm quitting work there. If I don't, I'll go nuts. It's that dull. Okay, okay. We'll take a vacation, huh, baby? I can use one. Having to meet that punk of a Marty Corville every Friday night. You just keep him out of sight two hours tonight. We'll rig that allowance for keeps. Right out now. I gotta drive the airport. Hey, you don't get those uniforms. You won't like what happens. All right, all right. I heard you. Okay. I'll be seeing you. Showing up, Duke. Definitely. One thing, Rita says he's prompt. Hey. There's a car, George. Mm. Watch him. That's Corbell. All right, move into the alley here. Couple of days he won't whistle like that. Definitely. He gets into the theater, we go. Got a kid with the box office doll. Come on, come on. There it goes. Okay. Oh, boy, this better be the right key. Hey, Joy, is this car in good shape? Yeah, Rita says it's okay. She borrowed it last week, had it checked over just for this job. She had this key made. Duke, I'll give you the pitch again. The big joint to sell the car service depot. The trucks bring in the money from the big stores and markets after hours. We tie up the clerks with tape, fill these sacks, get out of there. They mark any bills? They do, we burn them, we don't take no chance. No, no, I'll take them, Joy. I know a guy in St. Louis fixes up them mark bills. Yeah, we'll talk it over later. Okay, now there's a the place. Truck just leaving ought to be the last one. Uh, Duke, hmm? one more thing. Don't hang around town after this job, right? Definitely. Right, get on your mask. Put on your cap brim. Yeah. Now, don't hurry. In these uniforms, they'll think we're guards. Keep 
down below the window. Well, that's what you want. Hey, let me in. You forgot to sign this receipt. Oh, on, you're crazy. Let me in. Where do you think I want to hang around here all night? All right, all right. Don't get sore. Why, you punk. Keep away from that alarm, but you can't get away with this. No, you don't. Oh! Yes, boy, you dumb stoop. I have no time to take them up. Now, let's go. You guys stay down. Good old Duke. Definitely. Let's get out of here. Two hours? No, but we ought to get some sort of a lead out of a show up line that big. What is Mr. Garrett then? Well, it hasn't said much. Sure is it? Over the commissioner's office, getting the Clegg stories. Uh, say, uh, how's to order some sandwiches? I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Just as soon as I finish this report. Oh. There he is now. Well, what's new, Chief? Oh, not much. Anything out of that crackdown? No, nope, nothing. And here's a report on a couple of stolen cars, you said. Well, thanks. Now we can forget this first one, hot rod. The second one found near an athletic club. Athletic club? That's not far from the depot. Report of theft telephoned in at 9.15 by owner of car, Martin Corbell. Car stolen while owner at Trinon Theater. Hmm. Sounds like a fast pickup. And every police officer in town is out tonight. All these days off canceled. Corbell. Name, Corbell. He was a police lieutenant in Figueroa, Fire Squad. Brought a report here once about two years ago. Oh, yeah, of course. He was fired for taking bribes from mobsters. He had some connection with Joey Lucas's numbers pool racket. Was there anything else on that car, Chief? Well, when it was found, the ignition key was in the lock. Oh, meaning Corbell left the key in the car in the first place. I wouldn't think an ex-cop would do that. Does the car check with the Douglas description? This car is green, not brown. Douglas could have mistaken the color, though. We'll have him look at it, and then we'll talk to Corbell. You want me to keep after the lab about fingerprints? You do that. Oh, and see if you can track down Boots Madigan. Yes, Mr. Cooley? That's right. He hangs out at Joe Chenoweth's barbecue hut. Call Joe, tell him I want to talk to Boots. All right, Hangin. Let's go. the house, Chief. The one with the porch light on. Can you see the number? Uh, eight, nine, three. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. There's a light inside the house, too. You impound his car, Chief? Yeah. Yes, the drug has got a look at it. Well, nice night. Yeah, beautiful. 
Yeah? Oh, Mr. Garrett. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Calvell. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Come on in. Hi, Arlington. Hi. This way. Uh, is this about my wife? No. Well, the reason I ask, she's late coming home from her bridge club. That's not that trouble. Sit down. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Hmm, it's a nice place you got here, Corbell. Hey, we keep it up good. <laughs> Wife's people got dough. <laughs> Where are you working these days? Uh, I got my own place. Tobacco shop over by the Granite Insurance Building. Drop in sometime. Oh, we might do that. You know about that big haul tonight? <laughs> oh, who don't? But with the radio screaming all over the place? The police notify you your car was found? Yeah, yeah, they called me. Wouldn't release the car to me, though. Been identified as a getaway car. No kidding. You know something? I had a feeling it might be. I'm kind of psychic that way sometimes. I said to myself... You were at the Trianon Theater when it was stolen. Yeah, that's right. When I came out, it was gone. Did you leave the key in the car? <laughs> I'm off my rocket? Of course I didn't leave the key. It's right there on the table in that key case. What time did you get to the theater? Mm, about uh, 7.45, give or take a couple of minutes. And what time did you come out? About 9 o'clock. Eh, I couldn't take that picture. Look, uh, what's the idea of giving me this work over? I'm mm, just there for information. Well, that's about all, Cobell. For now. Uh, Mr. Garrett, when will I get my car back? When the lab crew gets through going over it. By the way, what was that picture you didn't like? <laughs> ah, some turkey called the uh, Fury of Love. <laughs> That's my speed. You can have it, Arrington. <laughs> How about a dame married once? Husband died. She fell high for this other joker, but her first marriage was so rough she didn't marry, marry him. And... Well, you know, uh, that picture showing when you went into the theater. Yeah, yeah, it was. Why? Would you swear to that? I don't know, hadn't I? Yes, but apparently you don't. The picture showing while you were in the try-and-on was a sneak preview. What? You can't bluff it, Corbell. I talked to the manager. Get out of that one, chum. Okay. I promise not to tell my wife and I'll come clean. No promises. But you'd better talk. Okay. I was calling on a friend of mine. Her, her name is Rita Mills. Uh-huh. I bought my ticket. I went in... Walked out the side exit and went up the street to her place. Now, look, don't... What's this girl's address? 229 Bannister, apartment 43. She's my alibi if I have to have one. Go ahead, ask her. I intend to. Look, if you can keep it out of the paper so my wife won't see it... You know how it is with women. Let's get out of here, Harrington. I need some fresh air. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the preview murder, here is an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. and murder at Armored Car Service Depot, a former police lieutenant, Marty Corbell, fired for taking bribes from gangsters, reported him that his car had been stolen. Question, Corbell at first said he spent the evening at the theater. Then, told he had identified the wrong picture, he said he had been calling on a girl, Rita Mills. Harrington and I went to question the Mills woman at her apartment. Put these walk ups on the first floor. You better take up handball, Harrington. Good for the wind. Yeah. Hey, what's with this dame, Chief? Well, she works for some pants and coat ops, that I understand. The detective Bureau hasn't had the time to find out much more. Probably she's all right. Yeah. What if she works Saturday afternoon? And you walked up four flights for nothing. Uh. Just a minute. Uh. 
success. <laughs> Are you Rita Mills? Well, yeah, but do I know you gentlemen? Oh, I'm Jared, district attorney, my assistant, Mr. Harrington. What do you want with me? Oh, just a moment of your time. <sighs> well, I guess you can come in. I'll be brief. Do you know a man named Marty Corbell? Yeah. Yeah, sure I know him. What about him? Was he up here last night? No, he wasn't here. Any idea where he was? Oh, listen, I don't keep tabs on him. How could I know? What? I was here alone all evening. I washed my hair, caught up on some reading, went to bed early. I was tired. Now, what's this all about? A little matter of murder. Maybe you've just given us the answer. Come on, Harrington. Right, Chief. Attorney's office. Hi. Oh, hello, Harrington. Nice weekend. I think. What do you expect on Monday morning? Dancing in the street? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, keep there? He's over at detention questioning Corbell. Where are you? Headquarters garage. Lab crew's going over Corbell's car. Thought I'd stick around while he finished. All right. Bye now. Oh, Mr. Garrett. Any luck? No. No. Corbell still sticks to his story. Swears he was with that girl. Anything from lab on the fingerprints? Well, they said they got dozens of prints over at the depot. Haven't matched them up, though. Anything else? That's Dooley. What's his name? He's waiting in your office. Boots Madigan? Yeah. If anybody ever belongs in jail, he does. Well, he's more valuable to us out of jail, Miss Miller. The price of his freedom is regular information about much bigger and far more dangerous criminals than he is. Yes, I know. Oh, don't call me for anything unless it's an A1 priority. Yes, sir. How are you, Boots? Oh, pretty good, Mr. Garrett. Uh, Chenoweth told me he was looking for me. That's right. Sit down. Cigar? <laughs> I don't mind, yeah. Take a handful. Oh, okay. Quite a job, wasn't it, Boots? Mm-hmm. What job? You know the one I mean. Over at the depot. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, that's what the papers say, Mr. Garrett. You know anything? Well, I don't know much. Well, let's have what you do know. Well... Well, Duke Alansky is in town last Friday afternoon. I seen him at the barbecue hut. Is he alone? No, no, he's with uh, Al Rigoli. The boys are saying that Duke flies east to buy a piece of Rigoli's new welterweight. What else do they say? Well, just uh, Duke flies back to St. Louis yesterday. Mm, didn't stick around long. No. Probably remembers how hot this town got for him a few years ago. Yeah. What else, Duke? Well, that's all I know. You're sure? Yeah. Mr. Garrett... Mr. G- I'm telling you true. I, I I don't know nothing more. All right. That's it. You can go now. Oh. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, uh Mr. G- I'm not up here, though, see, Mr. Garrett, because, you know, the boys find out, you know, I, I get the thing. Don't worry, Boots. I don't consider you any one priority, Harrison. Look, I bring speed wake up to get back. Oh, here's the chief. Good to see you, Boots. You're okay. You got something, Harrington? Uh, yeah, yeah. Lab crew found a gun taped under the front fender of Corbell's car. Taped where? Believe it or not, Chief, under the front fender. A revolver, snub nose, thirty-eight caliber. I have the serial numbers put on the teletype, all seconds. Good. I ordered the gun gone over for fingerprints, then turned over to ballistics. Now, follow through on it. I want those reports just as soon as possible. Right. Now, Miss Miller. Yes, sir? Contact the airlines. Find out if Duke Walensky was on any passenger list last week out of St. Louis. Walensky? Give him his full description in case he used an alias. I'll be at the office of a site manager named Al Rigoli.
It's almost six o'clock, Miss Miller. You'd better go on home. Yeah, that's what I told it, Chief. It took longer than I thought it was to locate Gregoli. I'll go along a few minutes, Mr. Garrett. I wanted to finish this report. Here you are. Flight schedule and passenger list. Oh, thank you. Now, let's go to my office, Hank. Well, thanks for finishing this, Miss Miller. Good night. Good night. Good night, here. See you tomorrow, beautiful. Fine girl, Harrington. Very loyal to her job. Yeah, if you ask me, it's not only the job she's loyal to. But I have a too long way, Chief. Now, uh, what's with Walensky and Rigoli? I'm in the dark. The story is Walensky was in town over the weekend to buy in on one of Rigoli's fighters. Rigoli just confirmed that. You believe it, Chief? Well, as far as Rigoli's concerned, yes. He said Walensky made him an offer. He turned it down, but it was far too low. So? Looks to me like a frame-up against Corbell. So our next move, Harrington, is to check back on the hood Corbell took bribe money from, then double cost. Yeah. Uh, maybe the guy was telling the truth about being up at that doll's place. Which means that she was lying. Why? Yeah. You want a shadow put on? Right away. Find out who she pals around with, where she's from, if she has anything on the police blotter. Everything about her. Right. Check back on all the criminals who ever worked with and liked Duke Walansky. Okay. Oh, one more thing, Harrington. Get a list of the serial numbers of those money bills to the St. Louis police. Description of marked bills, too. Ask their cooperation in picking up and questioning Duke Walansky. Got it. Uh, is it okay to use this phone, Chief? Go ahead. I'm going to have another look in our files. It's some of Walansky's pals. Uh, let's see. Long distance. Okay. Yeah, we're riding high. Make your best. What? Uh, double cross and cop. I'll get the chair for this. Still holding him, huh? Well, don't you read the papers? Uh, I don't want to worry any more than I have to. Worry? What about? The last paper I read said the key was left in the car. Look. That's careless, Joey. You hadn't ought to have been so careless. It's those little things. Listen, baby, you forget it, will you? Here. I brought you a present. <laughs> Take a look. Oh, Joey. <laughs> How do you like those spots? Oh, diamond earrings. Yeah. Wow. Make it all right? Oh, they're, oh, they're terrific. <laughs> oh, i got to go put them on. All right. Hey, wear them tonight. We'll go out and get your new outfit, too. Oh, shall we? Sweet. Yeah, we're going to go to Riverside Club, that ritzy new joint. I'm looking it over. I might buy a hunk of it. Well, how do they look? Oh, class, baby, class. <laughs> hey, uh... I'll get your coat. We'll go get that new outfit, huh? From now on, nothing but the best. Pull in here, Harrington. Do we go into the club or wait here, Chief? A little early. We'll wait. I didn't see the report on that 38. What did it say? Oh, just that the gun was traced to a sporting goods store out in the Reservoir Hill District. Saw them last month, night break. Took the ammunition, too. And it was the murder gun? Yes, ballistic checked it out. Oh. And Boots Madigan knew about it, huh? He knew about the theft of the gun from the store. Enough so we turned the theft on West Coran. You know that blackboard punk over in the third Avenue horse room? Yeah, used to run with Joey Lucas's rat pack. That's right. He made the break and stole the gun on Joey's orders. Joey figures a stolen gun can't be traced to him. Well, how do you like that? Whatever you are, Hank. Come on. Let's taxi. Looks simple when you see how everything adds up. Here, stand by to keep the change. Well, just a minute, Joey. I want to see you. What for? I got nothing to see you about, Garrett. That's what you think. Luke Walensky's a swell pal of yours, Joey. Yeah, what does that mean? He ratted on you. The St. Louis police. They got him for spending some of that marked money on the depot job. I don't know what you're talking about. Walensky's got nothing to rat on me about. Can't you, can't you talk to Joey later? 
Well, we got a party waiting for us in the club. You'll have a long wait, sister. You're going to have a lot to explain, Joey. A lot of things. Your thumbprint on the ignition key of Corbell's car, for example. No, no, there's been a mistake. Yeah, Joey made it. You come along too, Rita. We want to know more about those two guard uniforms missing from the place you work. Oh, Joey, I told Get you. Up. Here, take a look. I got a piece of oh, You want to get on, broken Joey? Oh, I... Okay, okay, you win, Captain. You never should have tried to rig this one onto Corbell, Joey. He's almost as much a rat as you are, but he's clean on this. All right, Sergeant. Take these two away. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here's the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. You probably remember the case. Convinced that Walansky had confessed, Joey broke down and told his story. The girl, Rita Mills, alias Margarita Moleno, with a shoplifting record in another city, also talked. Her sentence was ten years. Joey and Walansky were convicted of murder in the first degree. Joey's big mistake was in trying to pin the job on Corbell. And now this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lawrence.